Hi, I'm Mr Walker and this is the 2017 Level 1 Science Mechanics paper. Before you watch this video you'd probably benefit from having tried the paper yourself first um, and I'd recommend that you do that if you haven't already. I'll put the link in below the video. So in question one we're looking at a situation between two riders and their horses uh, competing in a race. We're asked to compare the speed and acceleration of Danny and Sam in the first 60 seconds. So the first 60 seconds takes us up to this point here. And just looking at the graph, we can see that both of the riders start from stationary. <coughs> and Sam has a steeper line here indicating a higher rate of acceleration and that acceleration is taking Sam from 0 meters per second to 8 meters per second over a time of 10 seconds so each little box representing 5 seconds because there's 4 boxes between 0 and 20. Sam then maintains a constant speed of 8 meters per second for the remaining time and that means that there's no acceleration. By comparison, Danny has a less steep line indicating a lower rate of acceleration and that acceleration takes Danny from 0 meters per second to 7 meters per second over a time of 20 seconds. Danny's, Danny's acceleration then drops to 0 and Danny maintains a constant speed of 7 meters per second for the remainder of that 60 seconds. So just reiterating that, Sam accelerates at a constant rate to 8 meters per second in 10 seconds and maintains that speed. The calculation you would use is change in velocity over change in time. That's, zero, that's 8 divided by 10 giving us 0 0.8 meters per second squared. Double check your units are squared for acceleration. Danny accelerates at the constant rate to only 7 meters per second and takes 20 seconds to do so. So our calculation for acceleration is change in velocity of 7 divided by a change in time of 20 seconds, giving us 0 0.35 meters per second squared. Sam has a higher acceleration and maintains a higher speed than Danny in the first 60 seconds. And so that's our summary statement there for that question. Okay, so for part B, Sam's horse accelerates for the first 10 seconds of the race and covers a distance of 40 meters. Sam and his horse have a total mass of 308 kilograms. Use the acceleration to calculate the work that Sam and his horse have done in the first 40 meters. So if we use the guess method and we write down what we've been given and what our unknown is, then our given values are time of 10 seconds, a distance of 40 meters, and a mass of 308 kilograms. We need to work out an acceleration because the work done is force times distance, and in order to work out the unbalanced force on Sam and their horse, we need the acceleration. We know the mass, we don't know the acceleration, we need the force, but we can work out the acceleration from the change in velocity over the change in time. Now the change in velocity as we saw earlier was 8 and the change in time was 10 and so that gives us an acceleration of 0 0.8 meters per second squared. It's important to point out here that a lot of mistakes are made by using the average velocity formula here and assuming that's the final velocity. So the average velocity formula is distance divided by time and you would do, you might end up doing 40 divided by 10 giving you 4 meters per second. It's important to point out that that is only the average velocity and not the final velocity. Um, and so the final velocity is 8. You can take that from the graph or you can double the average velocity to get that and then divide by 10 to get the acceleration. 
So these are the values that are going to be useful to us. Um, the acceleration and the mass are going to allow us to work out the force, and then the force, then the force times distance will give us the work done. So F equals ma. That's 308 mass times 0 0.8 acceleration gives us 246.4 newtons. That's the unbalanced force. And then using the unbalanced force. <coughs> um, because we're ignoring any frictional force here that's the force we use to work out the energy or the work done and that comes out at being 9856 joules part c explain the effect on work and power if a new heavier jockey was on sam's horse which had the same speed and acceleration over the race now for this one we're going to use equations for work and power and we're going to talk through what's happening with each of the terms in those equations and use that to support our answer. So using force equals mass times acceleration we're told that the heav it's a heavier jo jockey so mass increases and the speed and acceleration we're told are the same so we can state that acceleration remains constant in that situation, acceleration is constant, mass increases, therefore using this equation here, the force must increase. If the force increases, just using the same calculation we had before, if the force increases, distance remains the, remains the same, then the work done must increase. So we've answered half of the question now. Now the other formula that we're going to use in the front of the booklet is power equals work done divided by time. And as we found out from here, the work done has increased. So over here we can say the work done has increased. The speed and acceleration over the race are the same and so the time remains constant. And if the number on top of a fraction, the numerator increases and this one stays the same, then the power must also increase. Okay, on to part D. So after 90 seconds, Sam and his horse have travelled 710 metres. How much further had they travelled compared to Danny and her horse at this stage in the race? Okay, so we're looking at 90 seconds here. And so just following this line up. And we know the distance travelled by Sam and his horse. We're trying to work out then um, the distance travelled by Danny and her horse. Um, so that we can compare the two values. Um, because we're dealing with a speed time graph, the way that we work out distance travelled is using the area under the graph. So I'm just going to zoom in on that chart now. This will allow us to focus a little bit more closely on the areas we're interested in. Danny was the blue line, and so we can split up this into some shapes, a triangle here, a rectangle, another rectangle up to the 90 and a triangle up here so I'll show you that. The first triangle has an area of half base times height so the blue triangle is half times 20 times 7 giving us 70 meters. The rectangle here, the green rectangle has a base if you like of 60 minus 20 so it's important to recognize that that's 40 there a uh, common mistake would be to make it 60 but the shape doesn't extend all the way back to 0 only to the 20 so 60 minus 20 times 7 gives us 280 dividing this larger shape up here into a triangle and a rectangle gives us this gray triangle which has an area again of half base times height so that's 90 minus 60 uh, times 7 to 12. So that's 12 minus 7, which is 5. And that gives us 75 meters. This final rectangle then is a height of 7 and a base of 30, 90 minus 60, giving us a total distance traveled of 635 meters. If we subtract 635 from 710, that gives us the difference between the two, end, the two distances, and so that's our comparison. 
So Sam and his horse have travelled 75 metres further than Danny and her horse after 90 seconds.